The aspect of the users in a mobile network actually is divided into three main parts here in this small sequence for mobile networks. The first part is a question how to identify users. The second is how to do the handover. And the third is how to register to users, how to maintain the user basis in the network. Now, how do we deal with movements in our network? So, for example, if you uh, move with your bike and your phone uh, here through the network, through different cells, then the network provider somehow has to manage this movement. It has to support the so-called handover. And handover can happen if you, for example, have set up a call and then you might talk while you move through different cells. You don't want to terminate the call if you leave the one cell and again set up a new call if you enter a new cell. You want that you transparently are handed over to the next cell. And therefore, you need the handover mechanism, which is implemented in the MoMA network. How does the procedure look like? While you move with your bike from one cell to the other, you would register, you would measure the received signal strength. This is some measurement of the power you receive. And you see that for the first cell you were coming from, the received signal strength decreases. So you go farther away from this first antenna and the power which you receive decreases. On the other hand, the power which you receive from the second antenna increases because you come closer to this second antenna and then you receive the signal from the second antenna with a higher power. This is the time during the movement. So to the right is the time increase while you move from the left cell to the right cell. And then at some certain point in time, you would register that there is a certain difference in your signal strength. And this difference in the signal strength would then initiate your handover and there are uh, different uh, methods of handover actually. There's first the soft handover. Soft handover means actually that you maintain a connection to both base transceiver station during your handover. So you make your connection, you, you route your call to both antennas and only if the first antenna is far away so that the signal is received with only a small amount of the power, then you finally cut the connection to the first cell and you're handed over completely to the second cell. But for a certain amount of time, you would maintain a connection to both base transceiver stations. The hard handover is the other possibilities and hard handover means that you at a certain point in time, switch the connection from one base station, from the first base station to the other. So during the handover phase, you would monitor the received signal strength. If you see that the decrease is so steep that uh, probably a handover would make sense that because the received signal strength from the second base station is much higher, then at this point in time, you would completely switch to the other station completely hardly switch to the second base transceiver station for the connection. And therewith your handover is done. You're handed over from the first base station to the second base station. And this handover margin avoids that you switch back and forth if you are in this area maybe and there's only a small difference changing between the received signal strands of base station one and base station two. Only if you have the difference high enough between the first and the second base station, then you switch. And then the probability that you immediately switch back to the other base station is quite low. And that's why we have this handover margin here. And this handover margin is a significant value, which is determined by the network provider.
Then you can have different types of handover, and that means that different parts of the radio subsystem and different parts of the network subsystem might be involved in the handover. So you can imagine that if the handover is done from one base transceiver station to another, then there might be the second base transceiver station within the range of the same base station controller. And then it's a so-called intra-BSC. The base station controller does not change, but the base transceiver station changes. It is an intra-MSC. If the base station controller is changed, of course, then the base tra transceiver station changes as well, and the mobile switching center stays the same. But it can also be that an inter-MSC takes place, and that means then during the handover, the MSC, the mobile switching center, also changes, and that the mobile station gets in the range of the different MSC then. And as you see, these different types of handovers then impact different parts of the network, and there will also have different requirements regarding to the signalization. If you have this higher level handovers like inter-MSC, then you need more signalization. If you have the lower hierarchy handovers, then you might do the handover with less signalization. And you might also do an intracell handover. That means that you measure at one frequency that the frequency somehow has problems, uh, for example, due to fading, due to interferences. Uh, which are somehow happening in this frequency, and then you might perform an intracell handover. That means you stay with the same base transceiver station, but you change the frequency only. So the handover, in summary, is a mechanism to deal with the mobility, with the mobility of the mobile stations in the network, and to assure that there's the same service provided to the mobile station, even when the mobile station is moving.